Hello. The focus of this video is on this product here, Dungeon Crawl Classics Lankma. So this is a setting that I think uh, is a great setting. It can be used both with Dungeon Crawl Classics or what I would kind of even recommend is using it with just Dungeons and Dragons. It could be 5e or it could, or it could just be any other fantasy RPG of your choice. But I'm going to talk about this today. I'm going to talk a little bit about the history and why I think it's such a good fit with D&D um, &D in particular. There's quite a high percentage of people who don't currently subscribe to the channel. And so if this is the sort of content that you do like and that you do get something from, please do consider subscribing. Uh, it helps out a lot and it's a free way to support the channel. Before we dig deep into this, I want to draw your attention to a little preamble that occurs at the very beginning of uh, Men and Magic, at the very beginning of uh, the first booklet in the white box. It says here as Gary Gygax introduces us to the first time to the game of D&D, &D, these rules are strictly fantasy. War gamers or gamers who lack imagination those who don't care for Burroughs' Martian adventures, where John Carter is groping through black pits, who feel no thrill upon reading Howard's Conan saga, who do not enjoy the DeCamp and Pratt fantasies, or Fritz Lieber's Farford and the Grey Mouser pitting their swords against evil sorceries, will not be likely to find Dungeons & Dragons to their taste. But those whose imaginations know no bounds will find that these rules are the answer to their prayers. With this last bit of advice, we invite you to read on and enjoy a world where the fantastic is fact and magic really works. Now, this is in 73, at, this, well, at least when uh, Gary Gygax is saying that he's, he's writing this, first in November 73, just on the eve of the Woodgrain box coming out. But if we fast forward a few years to 1979, as we get the Dungeon Master's Guide, Gary Gygax presents us with something that's a little bit more, in some ways, a little bit more extensive as a inspirational reading list. And this comes to us by way of Appendix N. So inspiration for all the fantasy work I've done stems from the love my father showed me when I was a lad. And he talks about how his dad would read him stories and tell him stories about magic swords and rings and stuff. But really what he gets into here is that these, you know, as he's talking about D&D, these are the authors that really had a, a big influence on um, Dungeons and Dragons. And here he's spe um, speaking specifically <coughs> about AD&D. And he says, you know, the most immediate influences upon AD&D were probably uh, DeCamp and Pratt, Robert e. e. Howard, Fritz Lieber, Jack Vance, um, H.P. Lovecraft, I assume, and A. Merit. So he kind of, this list here is actually very similar to what he outlines in that first uh, preamble to, to OD&D. But nonetheless, we, um, you know, Fritz Lieber, or Lieber, however you want to pronounce that, uh, appears here under um, Fafford and Grey Mouser series uh, et al. So what's he actually referring to here? What is What are the books that he's referring to? By now, as we're sort of many years past, when um, Fritz Lieber first started writing, and indeed um, the author's since passed away, but we have what would be kind of collected into works now. And all of these books, these these two books here, deal with um, Lankmar in some way, the city of Lankmar, and in, in particular, it deals with two characters, Farford, um, who is a barbarian, and Grey Mouser, who is kind of a, a swordsman, and he has a magical background too, so he has um, some, some magical training. Now, personally, I really like this series, this book here, The Swords of Lankmar. If you've never read any of Fritz Leiber's stuff, I'd highly recommend this. To me, this is really what makes Fritz Leiber's work special, this whole book here. I, you know, I feel like if you read this, you get a good taster of the work. Um, it's quite inspirational, and again, you can see that real sort of uh, kinship to D&D &D within this particular book here. Um, yeah, well worth your time reading. Nowadays, you could probably pick up, you know, the the compilation works. This, this is sort of a newer copy. Um, if you really want to dive deep with Fritz uh, Leiber, I'd kind of recommend going with something like this. And while we're on the topic of Appendix N, I'd be remiss to not mention my personal favorite author off this list, which is Jack Vance. Uh, the Dying Earth series, this particular book here, um, which consolidates a lot of the Dying Earth um, stories is just 
in my opinion, excellent. I, I love it. And uh, Lioness is another series of Jack Vance's that I would recommend. So now that we've done a bit of our, our background, our background context and setup, we understand that, you know, Gary Gygax was very influenced by um, Fritz Leiber's work and with respect to Farford and um, the Grey Mouser series, the, you know, the everything that's set in Lankma. And that really persists not only in the very early days of D&D &D as this you know, very kind of odd game hits <laughs> the market for the first time, but a little bit later too, even into sort of ad advanced D and D years, and indeed, you know, even during that advanced D and D um, era of time, they produced a box set uh, specifically for Lankmar that was compatible with D and D. So there's a history here with Lankmar. Um, and there's a history here with Fritz Leiber, and it, to me, it's just such a cousin, such a close cousin to D and D, and what D and D really is about. You know, you've got these two characters that are fairly, in some ways, fairly amoral. Um, they're kind of picaresque. They, you know, they kind of get up to some dodgy stuff, but generally have a good heart. But you know, certainly. Um, you know, will kill people and do all sorts of stuff. Not unlike, um, you know, the typical D&D &D party. Just to be clear, this is not a review of this product. I just merely want to mention it because it's something that's inspired me a little bit. Um, you know, I've been digging into the books and reading those. And I just thought, you know, it'd be cool to talk about this. Um, I'll just also briefly touch on the fact that Dungeon Crawl Classics do um, this specific Lankmar series of adventures. So, you know, if you are wanting to run a um, kind of a full campaign uh, in, in Lankmar that would be possible. I'm not going to go into any of these in any kind of depth, um, but, you know, you, you can, these are available for, for purchase. Rats of Ilthmar, you know, has a very, is probably thematically kind of a bit of a close cousin of this one. Um, and so they kind of draw on these um, flavors of uh, Fritz Leiber's work and, um, you know, if, if this is a way that you want to get into it a bit easier, then, you know, you might consider picking up an adventure or something. But what I really wanted to focus on was, you know, was the box set, uh, because I think it's good bang for buck, and this could be the next campaign setting that you use. So let's dig in and see what you get. So first thing, there's a code under there. I haven't used it, so I'm not going to show you what that is, but you do get a downloadable code. The next thing in here is... Uh, a judge's guide to Neon. This is soft cover, and we get a bit of a map. It kind of gives a bit of an intro. Talks a little bit about um, the stories that is that is associated with this uh, Lankmar series. It talks about the uh, cosmology of Neon. So you know um, the cosmology and that kind of superstition is a fairly important thing that runs throughout the books. Um, I like that it's fairly light on that kind of cosmology element. So if you are wanting to transplant some of your own ideas into this, it would it would be very straightforward to do so. It talks a little bit about the surrounding areas. Um, so you've got different um, people groups like the Mingols and you've got um, uh, the Land of the Eight Cities, which are kind of, I suppose, companion Culturally, they they have some similarities to um, people from Lankma and yeah, cultures of the Inner Sea, other cultures of Neowon, and it talks a little bit about the gods of uh, Neowon that could be used within the setting. Again, if you want to, so I won't go into too much depth around this. The good thing here is that, and why I'm kind of recommending this as a setting um, for you know any D and D campaign, not necessarily Dungeon Crawl Classics, is it's pretty. Um, system neutral. So while it does have um, some spe um, system specific stuff for DCC, it's, it's really, you could use this kind of pretty much with, with anything. It goes into the magic system a little bit. And again, you could, it's kind of tied to DCC, but the, if you read the actual um, effects and spells and stuff, you could, um, you know, you, you could kind of tailor that a little bit. And I think that's Ningorbal's um, hut that kind of goes through all the swamps and marshes and stuff so yeah it has these kind of allusions to the story uh, to, to the stories of um Lankma as you as you read through this so some of this is yeah some of this is very sort of system specific but there's enough here where you can um you can kind of make it your own um so it talks about patrons and just some of the artwork's pretty cool and gives a good flavor of uh the city 
here is one of, um, oh, that's actually Ning, Ning Gobble, um of the Seven Eyes. So this is the guy that kind of directs Farfit and gives him guidance uh, around, you know, quests and stuff. And um, yeah, kind of lives in this dank cave. Sorry, I was thinking of Shelba, Shielba earlier. So Shielba is the one with that hut that we that we saw. Uh, there we go, Shielba up in the um, the hut, sort of walking through the swamp or the marsh. And Shielba's uh, mouse's kind of patron, I suppose. Talks of, again, just sort of goes into the gods a little bit. Uh, the hates talks about the idea of sort of an NPC, uh, NPCs in the living city. So one thing with this that I that I will say is, you know, a lot of it really is based around Lankmar as a city, and that's really where a lot of the adventure takes place in the um, in the in the books. You know, they often um, Farfet and the Grey Mouse are, are navigating. Uh, it, they either start the journey in Lankmar or they return to Lankmar at some point. So it's natural that a lot of the uh, setting would detail. Lankmar. So here we go, we've got Lankmar, City of the Black Toga. So this is a more Lankmar specific book. You know, I really like the artwork on it. It's, um, you know, quite vibrant in person. Uh, hopefully that comes across on the, on the camera. This talks a little bit about uh, this, you know, the city itself. So welcome to Lankmar, the City of the Black Toga and the greatest metropolis in Newon. This is a really nice sort of city supplement for for people who may wish to um, to run a game here, and as I said, it's just it's it's just that sweet spot of detail versus kind of leaving it leaving still stuff up to the uh, DM to to try to work out. So it does give quite a bit of guidance, um, and it you know gives you some specific tables and and stuff like that. Um, you know you can roll up a building, um, but and it talks about sort of air quality. One of the things with Lankmar is it's very um, like sooty and sort of smoky and black blackened cost of living you know thieves guilds and that kind of thing are very important in Lankmar so um you know and then here's a here we've got a sort of a Lankmar street scene so it really this is quite utilitarian stuff for instance let's roll say we rolled a 34 on the dice a drunkard half conscious and a pool of his own vomit I mean that's cool like that's just some random one that I pointed to I didn't read that beforehand that that kind of gives you some cool story maybe or like what's another one a young boy carrying cages filled with poultry um is there let's keep going we'll see if there's any any others here so uh a tiny black kitten perched on a fence or wall and watching the street intently so you know the cats have quite a big sort of like they're almost like omens or um you know they often signpost things narratively in Lankmar, so yeah, cats and kittens, uh, the, a black clad uh, toga, a, a black toga clad noble patriarch. Um, so yeah, it's, you know, Lankmar is just this really interesting city, and I think the cool thing about it is you could really just insert this in any campaign, uh, in any campaign setting. It doesn't ha you don't have to play a campaign in the world of uh, near one necessarily. This could just take. I mean, this could be in the Forgotten Realms. This could be in your own homebrew creation and it's just a really easy way to slot a cool and quite flavorful city into it i would just sort of make the argument that you don't even really need to know anything about the books like i i you know i hadn't read um before i bought this supplement i'd never read any of uh, fritz leiber's stuff or maybe i just started or something like i can't remember the way that it went down but the point is i didn't really know much about it and, and i just i thought it was really cool um, so then you've got the Street of the Gods, and um, uh, I can't remember what they're called, but the, oh, the Temple of the Gods of Lankmar and the Temple of the Gods in Lankmar, I think. And there's these really kind of ancient, um, these ancient gods that, you know, uh, these are them, and that they kind of, um, uh, in these tombs, and only in severe kind of crises do they emerge. Uh, and they're, they're pretty, pretty sort of nasty characters. They're, they're undead, and you, you don't want to meet them. And then you've got the gods that are, um, kind of more everyday gods, um, shrines and stuff. So, street, yeah, street of the gods, uh, temples, and so forth. So, just on on so many levels, it just has it has flavour. It's like very gritty. I think one of Fritz uh, Lieber's main um, ideas when he was creating uh, the whole Lankmar series was just to have characters who were just quite a bit more realistic than some of the, the heroes that appeared in other swords and sorcery at the time. So it's a bit more kind of grounded in what people are actually like. And I think that 
kind of plays out in um in you know in in this supplement but certainly in the stories as well um that kind of reminds me of a bit of a throwback um image in the uh D the dmg with his a um a horse riding down the street i'll put it up on the screen quite a quite a useful useful book here uh, it's got a bit of a rogues gallery with different creatures and it talks about the different um, characters i mean you you don't even have to have any of these key characters in like you, you wouldn't necessarily have to have uh farford and the gray mouse or in your version of langmar it could just be this place for the the um the characters to you know create their own their own space now i'm not going to be able to fit this big map in uh, i probably can fit this one the lands of neon so yeah this is a a full world map or as much of the world as we kind of get to know and you've got Lankmar right there sort of in the middle you've got the inner sea you've got the eight cities that that are sort of around this area um and uh Ilfmar there the city of the ghouls um the sinking land that they always have to traverse when they when they go back to um to Lankmar and then you've got the Sea of the East and the Outer Sea and so forth. So quite a simple map and it's, you know, geographically it's it's fairly confined. For me personally, with my with settings that I play, I often like having a more confined space. Um, it's just a little bit easier than this massive world um, that, you know, you have to populate. It's easier to populate something small. So as you can see, this map here is actually really big. And this is a, this is a, um, a city map of Lankmar. And uh, it's kind of an interesting, like proportionally, it's quite interesting. It's like very long, um, still, you know, got that same kind of stylized thing going on. But you've got funny names too, like Immigrant, you know, all the, all the roads are named different things like Beggar's Boulevard or Immigrant Street or Festival Street. It's quite, in some ways it's quite literal, um, like Pimp Street, uh, Cheap Street, Whore Street, like, yeah, just, just quite quite um quite memorable sort of locales and the way that they they present those locales or uh, fritz would present those locales is is good you also have a compendium of secret knowledge and this really deals with um kind of character creation i guess if you aren't using dcc this might not be so useful but if you are using it then um you know it's probably probably a good thing to read through and um, you could use this, t there's certainly tables here um, that you would, you, you could use even if you're not using DCC. So it's still got some pretty, pretty, pretty useful stuff in it. I really like the art direction. Um, some of the DCC stuff I'm not as big on, but this particular product, I really do like the art direction of it. Um, it just feels, it feels fairly, fairly fitting. Like these portraits and stuff are that pretty cool and then you also get um within this you also get a, a level one adventure and this could be you know kind of a good start to to a campaign if you want or or if you want to come up with your own um so i'm not yeah i'm not gonna sort of go into too much there but you know rats are a pretty big theme in Lankma, and you've got these quite cool what would you call these maps are they isometric no i don't know I don't know what the term that you'd use for this would be, but um, yeah, quite quite cool maps. And then um, we've got a judges screen as well, uh, which has whole you know like carousing, which is extremely important in Lankmar. A lot of carousing goes down. Um, patrons, languages, fleeting luck, the quarters of Lankmar. So it kind of goes into the different quarters and just gives a high level summary of what those quarters are like, critical table. So even if, again, even if you're not using DCC, just nice that there's a, uh, a DM screen or a gem screen included in this, pretty, pretty cool. Uh, and then finally, we've got this kind of newsletter type thing. I won't pull it, pull this out, but it sort of goes into the um, uh, Michael Curtis, who, who did a lot of the um, writing and research in this particular thing. Um, sort of goes into a bit of the the history of of how this came to be a DCC publication. So yeah, this is just a high level summary of Dungeon Crawl Classics Lankmar. As I said, this to me is a really cool uh, piece of my collection. I would like to use it in some capacity for at least a game, if not a campaign. And if you are looking for some kind of alternative to some of the more well known settings, 
Um, I think this would, this is could, if you're into that kind of swords and sorcery stuff, um, or it's just something a bit different, something not as heroic or something a bit grittier, you know, that sort of plays around with morality and heroes aren't necessarily good. I think you'd really like this. And um, yeah, it has my recommendation. Is this going to be for everyone? No, I don't think it is for everyone. This is a case where you do have a smaller publisher, uh, Goodman Games in this instance, where they're, they're willing to, uh, you know, publish material uh, that might be a little bit more, you know, this might offend people, like having streets called Hall Street or whatever, Pimp Street, that may be offensive to people. I don't, I just don't see Wizards of the Coast publishing something like that um, without some, you know, kind of changing of, <laughs> of, of how things are named. And as I said, that might be offensive to you and, and maybe, if, and if it is, you know, fair enough. But for those who do really like that swords and sorcery flavor, that more kind of gritty, dark, um, kind of, yeah, these kind of <laughs> anti-heroes in a way, I think it's, it really does hit sort of a sweet spot. And, and as I said, there's a bit more risk to the content that's being published. It has, and therefore... Um, I sort of make the argument that it has a bit more character or, or flavour because of that. You know, even if there's sort of ways of presenting information in the stories that is a bit kind of outdated in today's terms, I, th I still think you can enjoy the story. To me, it's also about the literature. So it's how the story's been written, the words that have been used, and the sort of the images that they conjure up for me. And, and you know, do I believe in the characters? And in and, and, uh, Fritz Leiber's case, I do. And so... I do, I believe them as characters a lot more than a lot of kind of mainstream D&D stuff. As far as value for money is concerned, I think this is a really great deal. Um, you've seen everything that this comes with, you know, from the booklets, the, the lore booklets, to the maps, to the adventure, to the GM screen, I think. I think if you bought this, you wouldn't be disappointed. As I said, this isn't a review, so I mean, I'm recommending it, but I'm not reviewing it. I'm just saying, personally, this is something I, I enjoy. And uh, if you're kind of like-minded in some of the literature that you like to consume or, you know, what you look for in a, in a campaign setting, then this may be up your alley. Thanks for watching and uh, see you in the next one.